God bless you. It's Pastor George. Crazy old Pastor George. Lately, there's been a lot of suicides by children, depression, uh, spousal abuse, fear, pain, the self-destruction of mankind. This has been going on, and I'm seeing a lot of emergency prayer requests for children with learning disabilities who are self-destructing and, and, and wanting to commit suicide because of they can't handle the isolation. And, you know, and it's wickedness. <clears throat> it, it's wickedness. It has really, really gotten extreme. For lack of a better word, guys. I want to read you part of this here in 1 Timothy. Chapter 2 is part of what we're doing. But before I get started, I'm going to go ahead and say a small prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just... Lift you up right now, O oh God, that our children, Satan has no power or authority over our children. Satan is not allowed to touch the minds of our children and our people, your people, O oh God. We rebuke Satan in Jesus' name when it comes to our children, O oh God, our families, our homes. Satan is not allowed in them if we are Christian. By your authority, O oh God, they mu Satan must flee, and his minions must flee, as you have told us, O oh God. You told us, O oh Lord, that no manner of evil would come upon us if we keep the whole armor of God upon us. God, this sadness, this tragedy, is only coming because we are not focusing enough on God in our homes. Our jobs as parents, oh God, is to teach our children. Show us what we must teach our children, even those with learning disabilities. Show them, help us show them your love, oh God, in action in what we do. Even in our limited state of evil that's around us. Because of the evil around us, oh God. Just guide them, seal them, help them. Show them your way, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I'm going to start right here <clears throat> in 1 Timothy 2. And I want to read this to you guys. And you're reading it exactly the way I got it posted for a reason. 1 Timothy 2, 1. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Who gave him a ran himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Wherein do I am ordained a preacher and an apostle? I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifted up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also, that's a separate subject, but I want to get on the first eight verses for a reason. <clears throat> then when we go over here to Ephesians 6, I want to share this with you guys because it's all important. Now let's go to Ephesians 6. <clears throat> There's a reason I'm going over here. And I want to start right here. I want to start at verse 10. For a reason. And I'm going to start here at verse 10 for a reason, guys. And I want you to really listen to what the whole armor of God is. And then I'm going to talk about it for a moment. <clears throat> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand 
against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Before I get into the whole pieces of armor that you were, most, you were supposed to wear, I want to reread this again from verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the e in the evil day. Remember, read that again, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. I want you to think about that. Have you done all for your children as parents to stand in this evil time? Have you done what is required of you as a parent to ensure the solidness of mind and soundness of mind your children are supposed to have? Or have you been a lazy Christian? <clears throat> as a pastor, I'm not going to pull punches. <clears throat> what we are seeing in our children are a reflection of what we are not doing as parents. We are not training up our children in the way they should go. Because if we were training up our children and helping them understand the word of God instead of allowing them to seek it themselves and attempting to decipher God's word, we are failing our very children and thus is allowing Satan's depression and attacks demonically to affect our children. I'll pray for your children. I'll pray for your families. I'll pray for people. But I will not sugarcoat the word of God and change what it means to make you feel better about yourself. If I did so, I am complicit in your sin and in your inability and laziness. I could go on all day just on that one subject alone. Are you complicit in your child's suicides? Are you complicit in teaching your children right from wrong? Are you complicit in allowing your child to become spiritually dead? It's different when they become adults and have strayed from the word that you have taught them. And then all you can do is pray. When they come of age. Teaching your child to live according to the word of God. Means to prepare them against the enemy's attacks. Now let's get on this whole armor of God, shall we? Let's talk about the whole armor of God. Now let's go to 13 again. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand... Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Loins girt about with the truth. The truth comes from the very word of God. And if you are not living according to those very truths, are you not deceiving your children? Are you not deceiving the very people around you that you're only performing lip service? What about the breastplate of righteousness? Living, prepared to do what God had commanded you to do. Let us go ahead and continue. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Study to show thyself approved. Is exactly shodding yourself with the preparation. Putting on the shoes of knowledge and of wisdom that comes from biblical knowledge. Proverbs 1 7 says the beginning of the fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of wit. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. 
the preparation of the gospel of peace is the fear of God. Studying to show thyself approved is preparation of the gospel of peace. Knowing what Christ commanded us to do and how to live. Now, we're going to go further. We're going to say this here in, 15, in 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Right there. And above all, look at 16 again. And I'm going to highlight it so you can see this. And you should mark from 10 down until I tell you we're done. But look at that again. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all, not some, but all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Your Bible is your sword of the Spirit. Which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So, 10 to 20 of Ephesians chapter 6. I don't write this down, guys. This is all where God has told me to go. We need to start teaching our children and our families the very word of God. We need to quit this whole attitude of, well, oh, I don't think that's what it means. I don't think that's what it means. It's exactly what it means, guys. It's exactly what it means. We need to start armoring up, start preparing our children, living according to what God had told us to live according to, how he told us to live. Christ did not say love was a flawed human emotion, but an action when he stretched out his arms and died on the cross 2,020 years ago then rose three days later. Yes, he died at 30. And rose three days later. According to Scripture. 33, excuse me, according to Scripture. <clears throat> and rose three days later. We can study numerology all day long and we're not going to get nowhere. It's going to lead us down a... <clears throat> it's going to lead us down a rabbit hole we need not go. But again, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So think about that when we put on our armor. Now, like I said, Jesus Christ took upon himself to become the payment for sins. But I want to, I want to get right here to 1 Timothy 6.1. That's my next one. Like I said, this is a precursor to what's going to happen Saturday on our Sabbath service. These are all preliminary, preparatory video because I have obligations tonight. So you won't see me live tonight, but you'll see this video in its place. But there's a reason behind why I'm talking about this today, guys. Let's look at 1 Timothy 6.1. Let as many servants as under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved. Partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Now, I want to get to the next section of this, which is verse 3. 
but I have to put it in context. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strife the word, whereof come, cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and dispute, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And the words, it is, are in italics. Just so you know. <clears throat> Which means they've added them to make the sentence full. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into, into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give ye charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in time, in his time, he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Give me a second, I'm going to get a drink of water. <coughs> Who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Again, you as parents, you as parents need to remind yourselves and be responsible. That if your son cannot understand the word of God, that you understand the word of God. And if you don't, ask God for that discernment. Because no word is given by private discernment but or private interpretation, but by the very words of God. And if you are taking the words and twisting them, then you are the ones that are leading to your son's demise and your daughter's demise. <clears throat> now, I constantly speak against false teachings. I constantly speak against this behavior and this mentality to allow children to discover it for themselves. Your job as a parent is to teach the child in the way he shall go, and he shall not depart. Sparing the rod is twofold. It is discipline, it is admonishment, and it's scriptural. You must teach the child two ways. You spare not the rod, so spare not instruction either. But train up your child in the way he shall go, and he shall not depart from it, comes from sparing not the rod. Because the minute you spare the rod, you spoil the child. I'm not saying beat your children. I'm not saying discipline your children cruelly. I'm saying discipline them in the manner that God had told you to. That scripturally, physically, punish them when they are wrong. Teach them what they are to be, who they are to do how they're supposed to live, according to the word and promise God had given you. You want children to come out of depression? Give them a purpose. School is not a purpose. School is a place to learn which has been corrupted. Then you become the teacher that you're supposed to be as a parent. <clears throat> this also goes for people that have been brought into your life, folks. Your spiritual children. As pastoral parents and ministry parents of others known as elders, we are known as elders, our job is to lead others to Christ and to teach others in the way they should go so that they shall not depart from it. If you are not teaching them what they should do and what they shouldn't do, are you no less guiltier than your parent, you being a parent of your child by allowing them to find 
pass to destruction versus pass to godliness. <clears throat> Guys, I'm a little bit yelly and preachy today. Because this has been hurting me. This is the second time I've heard in the last four days of children wanting to commit suicide. And people wanting to just give up on life. Because they're not being taught according to God's promises and plan. They are left to their own studies and demise. All you are doing is bringing damnation to people you're supposed to be helping come out of damnation. You are complicit in their sin. You will be held accountable if you are a spiritual elder and do not teach Christian children how they should go so that they won't depart from it. Because we become born again when we accept Christ as our Savior. Our elders are responsible for how we live. We are complicit as elders for our spiritual children, young babes in Christ. We are to train them up in the way they should go. The same goes for you parents with little children. Train them up is my message. Train them up in the way they should go. Lead them not on that wide path to destruction, but that narrow path that leads to eternal life. Show them that Christ no longer has love as a human emotion, but as an action. He went to the cross and died for you. That changed the definition of love from an action to a physical act. Putting on the whole armor of God is just beyond just putting on a body on armor. It's preparing yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually for the war that is coming. We are in the great falling away generations, guys. <clears throat> we need to be more responsible. We need to live according to the word and be the beacon of light that God called us to be. We cannot be that if we're being selfish and self-centered and egotistical. Look again at verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the face and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Because though, O man of God, flee these things. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good faith, the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, wherein thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. <clears throat> if you have confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, then why aren't you living according to that profession? Why are you lazy and not teaching your children what you know about God? By example and action. This is the spirit that God had given me today. This is the message that God had given me for tonight. Family. And it hurts. It hurts immensely. That people have denied the very truth of God. In their actions, deeds, and attitudes. And if you look at the subject of 1 Timothy 6, 2, false teaching and true riches. True riches are not physical. True riches are spiritual. And they're eternal. Put on the whole armor of God. Live according to God's promises and plans. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Live according to what God has commanded you to live according to. Come out of her, my people. He says. Come out of the selfishness. Come out of the wickedness. Come out of the narcissism. And the me generations. Start seeking God's word fully. Not babbling in false prophets and false deification of man. 
but follow after Christ. Seek God's will in all that you do. That is what God is telling you. Get your armor on. Pull it up. Teach your child the way he should go. Spiritually and physically. Train him up. Quit sparing the rod. The rod comes in two forms. Biblical rod is the word of God. Discipline. Showing the child thereof. Whether he be an adult physically and a child in Christ or a small child and a parent. Spare not the rod. Dis chastise. Refute. Teach them in the sound doctrine. For a father and a mother that loves their child wants nothing but the best for them. Why are you denying your children the best things by not teaching them, not living according to the examples God has given you to teach them by? <clears throat> this is the message that God has put on my heart today. I didn't plan this. I refuse to write anything down. Because if I write it down, it's from me. This is what scripture is telling you, folks. This is where the spirit has led me. The same spirit that leads us all if we choose to live according to God's word. That's not where we're going. It's Matthew 5 I want to go to. I want to talk about Beatitudes. This is where you should start your children. After they found out about Jesus Christ. I want you to really look at this, guys, and really listen to what he says here in Matthew 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed which are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. But I want to continue this. So it doesn't change my chapter. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and be trodden, and to be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. 
Let your light so shine before men that they may see of your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that your, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And what keep reading listen pay attention <clears throat> ye have heard that it was said in that by them of old time <clears throat> thou shalt not kill and whosoever shall kill be shall be in danger of the judgment but I say to you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment and whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council but whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave thy gift therefore, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thy adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest any time the adversary deliverly, deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thee will be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence until thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. <clears throat> Had to get a drink of water. I was getting laryngitis. <clears throat> you have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for these that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. <coughs> It has been said that whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you that whosoever shall put his wife, put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her, that is divorce, committeth adultery. Again, ye have heard that it had been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than nays, cometh of evil. You have heard that it had been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee only on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain, too. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, Turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it had been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than the uh, than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be you therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven 
is perfect. I want to stop there because it sums up exactly what I said all along and it's confirmation. Train up your children. Teach them the basics. Right from Matthew 5. The Beatitudes. Get that in your child's head. Immediately. Get that in your children's head. And you brothers and sisters in Christ, get it in your head. Read all of Matthew 5. Get it in your head. Get it in your heart and live according to what Christ said. Quit turning to the stupidity of this world. Quit falling backwards. Start focusing forward. Am I righteous? No. Nothing I did is righteous. But by Christ's blood, I am made righteous. By his propitiation, his payment. And it's my responsibility to admonish you and teach you and refute you in Scripture. And to teach you accordingly as a child of God under my care in the way you should go so you won't depart from it. Parents, it's your job to train up your children in the way they should go so that they not depart from it. Spare not the rod and spoil the child. And don't spoil the child because you keep sparing the rod. These so-called pastors keep sparing the rod. They want to give happy, happy, joy, joys. But they forget that people need to be put in their place and instructed. The rod is also the word of God. And we have to punish by the word of God your conscienceless and get it in your head to live according to God's word. I'm not here, I'm not trying to yell. But I am going to speak boldly. And that's what this is, is bold speaking. Because you all have become lazy and complacent and not living according to God's word. Fear is a liar. 365 times God said, do not fear plus. He said the only fear we are allowed is to have reverent fear. And that's found in Proverbs 1.7. <coughs> <coughs> and stop abusing the anointing oil. The only time anointing oil is supposed to be used is in healing. Praying over the sick and elderly. That's the only time the anointing oil is supposed to be used in this new covenant. Not your home. Because the Holy Spirit anoints your home when you live for Him. When you live for God in Christ. The Holy Spirit's presence is in your home. And the very words, I rebuke you, Satan, in Jesus' name. Get thee hence, is all you need. And seal it with an A in Jesus' name, amen. And Satan cannot enter in until you stop serving and get complacent again. That is called faith. An anointing of the Holy Spirit of your home. That's the anointing you need. Again, I'm going to close here. But again, God bless you guys. We love you. And let us go ahead and close in prayer. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. We ask your guidance, O oh Father, in everything, God. Jehovah, we ask you, O oh God, our Creator, that you protect our homes, protect our hearts, protect our minds. Give us the strength and the courage to seek you in everything and all things that we do. That we take action upon it like Christ had told us to do. Lord, we seek not our own glory, but your glory, O oh God. Your light to be shining through us. Your light to give us strength and courage and hope, O oh God, in these dark, troubled times. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Guys, I love you. God bless you guys. Peace and shalom.